spiritual ones. The spiritual ones who, they are the ones who, by reason of an experiential walking with the Holy Spirit over time, have come to a point where they have exalted the presence of God and the word of God, His word and His voice, above and beyond their senses. They have come to a, an experiential reality where the word of God becomes the governing factor of their lives. They are led by the Spirit. They are led by the word. The word of God paints the picture of their new reality. Their senses have lost the ability to draw a picture of their future and their destiny. They only see things from God's perspective. Let me tell you something about perception in the spirit. In the physical realm, when you talk to people, they speak to you based on their level of perception, how they see reality. Are you following me now? For instance, in geography, basic geography, they teach us that the sun rises from where? The east and sets where in the west from this plane of reality that is true is that correct but when you go outside of earth you will know that that reality no longer exists is that correct based on a new plane that you are standing on you see that the sun is not rising and setting it's static and the planets are revolving around it hallelujah and so we must get to that point where we become spiritual people not just in word that the Holy Spirit leads us to a plane in the spirit where we stand from God's perspective and we begin to view life not from the perspective of education and government and the policies of men that come with their frailties and limitations that we stand from his plane and begin to judge things spiritually. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the spiritual man is judged of no man. Because he lives by the word. He lives by the spirit. So God is helping us so that we will walk in the spirit. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. So then walk in the spirit and ye shall not gratify the desires of the flesh. It says for... The spirit lusted after the flesh and the flesh lusted after the spirit and both of them are consistently under contention. And so it tells us that the way forward is to walk in the spirit. To live in the spirit. To come to that point where we not only function as intellectual people but we function as spiritual men. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Acts chapter 14. Verse 6. And they were aware of it and fled to Lystra and Derby, cities of Ly Lyconia, and unto the region that lieth round about. 7. And there they preached the gospel. Verse 8. It says, And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet being a cripple from birth, who never walked. The same had Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Now the Bible uses a very interesting word. It says that Paul was preaching and he saw a man who was impotent. And while Paul was preaching, he turned and he perceived in his spirit that that man had faith that was able to cause him to be healed. Hallelujah. Spiritual perception. The art of knowing and relating with your spiritual senses. Hallelujah. When you get born again, let me tell you something. To be spiritually dead does not just mean that the Holy Spirit is away from your life. It means that your organs of expression and interaction with the realm of the spirit have been deadened. Are you following me now? The Bible makes us understand that God designed man to be able to function both in the realm of the spirit and to function in this realm. Are you following me now? The Bible says that God made Adam, man, dust and breathed upon that man the breath of life, the spirit of God. And that man became a living soul, capable of relating with both realms. 
Are you following me now? Now, when the Holy Spirit left man, what are, it wasn't just that man lost righteousness, but he came to a point where he was spiritually dead. Because the Holy Spirit left him, his organs of expression and interaction with the realm of the Spirit became dead. Are you following me now? That was the beginning of what we call experiment. A true spiritual man does not experiment. Adam named the animal without making any reference to any biological material. The word name the animal does not mean he called lion, lion. It's science that called lion, lion. Adam gave lion its identity. Hallelujah. And so when man fell, he no longer was able to normally relate with the realm of the spirit and interact. His sense of hearing, seeing, perceiving, and knowing. Can I tell you something? In biology, they teach us that we have how many senses? Let's do a quick review. Name them. One, two, so I, uh, what is what was the third one? Hallelujah. Basic biology. Now, we are taught that we have five senses. Hallelujah. But in the realm of the spirit, you have more than five senses. Are you following me now? I, I've read books about spiritual senses and people say, you, oh, no, 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 no. There are certain manifestations in the spirit that do not have an explanation in this realm. For instance, what ability of the spirit do you use to know things? You need a mind to know things in this realm. In the realm of the spirit, if you touch the flower in the realm of the spirit, you don't know it by studying it. You have the feeling of becoming that flower. And instantly, you have every knowledge that you require about that flower. Are you following me now? In the realm of the spirit, there is no time and there is no distance. Are you following me now? These are spiritual realities. You, you do not measure time. You, you cannot measure time time is irrelevant in the realm of the spirit this is why god says a thousand years is like a day before him so as far as he's concerned the promises he made in your life he still made them today and while you are grumbling and complaining and say lord five years god says this is you are talking from a fleshly point of view when you rise and become spiritual you will know that it's still one day god is still faithful hallelujah because he functions from the realm of eternity. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11. The Bible says that he makes all things beautiful in his time. And he has put eternity in the heart of man. And so the realm of the spirit is an interesting realm. In the realm of the spirit there are no secrets. Are you following me now? No secrets. If we are all to be caught up in the spirit right now. You need to confess and repent and roll on the floor. Because there are no secrets in the spirit. That's why the Bible calls him the father of light in whom there is no shadow of turning. All things lay bare in the realm of the spirit. And every time you begin to, that's where we get the concept of what we call imagination. Comes from the Hebrew word Yazar. The ability to conceive things until they crystallize and become a reality in the spirit. That's how demons and all of these mind readers and sorcerers are able to tap into the spirit. You see, there are several planes in the spirit. The realm of the spirit is not heaven. The realm of the spirit is a spiritual environment that is real, just like this. Are you following me now? So when you get caught up, there are many people... Who are smiling, they've been caught up into the realm of demons and sorcerers, astrologers, mind readers, and all of these people. They function from the realm of the spirit. That's why they can tell you certain things about your life. Because what you call future, when you go to the realm of the spirit, you find out that it's not future. It's only future according to this realm. That's why God gave us Expo. He says you want to reign in life, see it in the spirit. You will always be ahead in this life. And then you reproduce it in this realm. If there is victory in the spirit, then there must be victory in this realm. That's why the kings, every time they would go to war, they would call the priests and the prophets. See in the spirit and tell us, are we wasting our time? Or oh, this is a victorious battle. And the prophets will come and say, I have seen it. There is victory. Hallelujah. 
But the society has trained us to be carnal people who walk after our senses. And get whipped and punished by the vicissitudes of life. Hallelujah. The realm of the spirit is very powerful. One time I was caught up in the spirit and I looked at people and all I was seeing was light. They were emitting different, different um, magnitudes and colors of light. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he told me this light is the degree and the depth of Christ. That has been formed in the people. Hallelujah. And your strength is gauged in the spirit. By the degree of light that you emit. That's what we do in quantum physics. When you want to know things about elements. You expose them to light. And they reveal certain things. Where did they learn that principle from? Why do you think quantum physics is hard? Because it's an attempt to study realities. That can only be explained in the spirit. Don't blame yourself because your lecturer called you stupid. He has not yet come to the realm of the spirit to understand how hard things are. You should clap for me. Come on. I qualify to work as a counselor. Hallelujah. There are many of us who, when we get born again and get filled with the Holy Spirit, we are not taught how to begin to interact with the atmosphere of the spirit. And if you are not taught, you can get into error. Because suddenly you find out that your organs of expression and interaction with the realm of the spirit are coming alive. And then you do not know how to navigate through the path of the spirit. And then we begin to hear voices. And have expressions that we cannot explain. And this is why this teaching is preparing us. Are you getting blessed? The Bible says Paul was preaching. And suddenly, there was a signal in his spirit man. The Bible calls it perception. The ability to perceive realities. Hallelujah. When you get born again, and the Holy Spirit comes to live in you. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost and you begin to pray in tongues. You see, when, for many of us who have been taught that this tongues thing is only raising Pentecostals, you are cheating yourself. There are certain levels of light and glory and power you can never walk in. God gave you the blessings of the gift of these tongues to cause you to activate your organs of expression and interaction in the spirit. Suddenly you begin to pray in tongues. And while you are praying in tongues, suddenly you feel a cool sensation. And you cannot explain, you cannot account for. A few minutes later, your body is burning. What language is being communicated? Suddenly your eyes and your hands, it looks like there is a particular operation of the spirit that causes only your eyes to begin to burn. Lord, what are you saying? What spiritual language is this? What organ of expression is being activated in the spirit? And suddenly you are praying and sometimes you have to turn because you sense you are not alone in that place of prayer and then you cannot even understand your organs of interaction with the spirit they are getting enlightened and built and activated by the power of the spirit and you begin to pray and there is a manifestation and you begin to hear all kinds of sounds sometimes you hear voices choir singing and angel manifestations you feel oil crowns on your head all kinds of things fire Sometimes you are praying and in less than one minute you sit down and fall asleep. And you cannot even explain what happened. It's important that we train ourselves to understand these things. Because these are the weapons of victory in the spirit. And if you do not understand, you will feel that the Holy Spirit is not leading you. Are you getting blessed tonight? Thank you Lord Jesus Christ. Perceptions in the spirit. There are many of us who pray and suddenly you go blank for a few minutes. Then you come back and you cannot even explain what has happened. You just know that in that split seconds, when you start writing what you saw, it will take an hour. And you are saying, what is this? In less than a minute in earthly time, you got realities that will take you an hour. And religious people will say, well, just mind your business with these your things you are doing. But the Holy Spirit is calling you to understand the atmosphere of the Spirit. When danger is about to happen to someone, 
somehow there is an ability of the spirit that is at work in you and when you train yourself to understand these perceptions you will be able to flow as a king in this life and in this realm you will never be taken aback so when someone comes and wants to do business with your father the moment you want to move there it comes again the spirit your organs of interaction in the spirit no matter what evidences you have there is are you listening to me if you do not realize that you are a spiritual man you will be cheated in this life because you will miss out on certain things there there is a way that the holy spirit communicates to me every time I'm, I'm entering new seasons in my life can i tell you something there is no hard and fast rule into working in these things it is a personal product of your dealings with the spirit that's why you cannot just write book and a, a book and say every time you feel it is the healing anointing no sir it's true that the healing anointing is associated with it and all of this. You can't just generalize it. You will lead people into error. Because as you stay with the Holy Spirit, He begins to teach you what He will reveal as His impressions. He will teach you His language and His code that is customized to just you. And when you stand to minister, that's how sometimes we minister. It doesn't mean we always see visions. There are times that I'm moving and there is an operation and there is perception in my spirit. And I know not just that the anointing is there, but the kind of anointing that is there. And you don't waste your time trying to heal headache when there is an anointing to heal cancer. And then you keep struggling until your spiritual antenna keeps navigating and suffering. Then when you finally hit it, then there looks like a breakthrough. Have you seen people in meetings who suffer and do every spiritual gymnastic? They don't seem to connect. Then it's like an antenna. While they are tuning somehow, whether by mistake or by mercy, they just hit it. Suddenly you begin to see that people get blessed. And instead of the person to go back and say, Lord, let it not happen again. The person laughs and says, wow, that's a powerful meeting. Open your eyes. Open your ears And soon you understand That the Lord is here Open your eyes Open your ears Then you'll understand That the Lord is here there are some of us who begin to pray and then you find out that you begin to have strange experiences where you can begin to talk about someone and you are not really seeing any vision in the spirit yet you can describe the person with accuracy and detail and his clothes you don't know where you are seeing from you just know that you are talking there is someone wearing a blue dress standing you weave your hair how you are getting it you cannot even understand you are not really seeing any vision people think you are seeing a picture you are this there is an agency in the spirit that cannot be explained in this realm but it's a tool for interaction then you are able to relate with the spiritual atmosphere and then you speak with accuracy and precision organs of expression in the spirit as I'm speaking to you, God is activating these things because He's giving you explanations then. At certain times, you're just moving and these perceptions, do you realize every single one of us in this place, the Holy Spirit has been communicating to you through these means. It's only that we have not been trained to understand that these are the promptings and the communications of the Spirit. This is the first step into the manifestation of the prophetic that you can understand. Your organs of interaction in the spirit. There are times you sit down and many of us suddenly begin to see flashes of lightning in different colors and you do not realize that what you are attempting to see is the manifestation of angels. You just think you are seeing ribbons moving around. Who told you they are called ribbons? They appear and move so fast. The Bible says, he maketh his angels wings. He uses the word pneuma. Wings. Hallelujah. Spirit of the Lord. Many times, 
when you're standing and the Lord wants to call you to a place where he will reveal secrets to you, there are ways he begins to lure you. But when your organs of expressions are deadened and they are not trained to understand that the Lord is beckoning on you. The man called Bishop Oyeriko said he was moving and the Lord told him, go to a solitary place. I want to speak to you. How many of us have missed out on secrets? That would have been communicated unto us if we only understood that these operations of the spirit were languages. Paul said there are voices. We have been trained. You see, in this realm, if, if you do not rise above this realm, you will try to relate with the spirit using your knowledge of this realm. There are more organs of interaction in the spirit than we have in this realm. If you can believe that, that's the first step to begin to walk with the spirit. The concept of hearing God and walking and flowing with the Spirit have never been a difficult phenomenon. We are just, we just, we, we have not been trained to understand. I've said it here. Let me tell you something about the voice of God. Now I'm going to shock many of you. Do you realize that God does not speak what you hear that you think is His English? It's not English. The language of God is light. Are you listening to me? strong presence in this place the language of god is light i've explained this but let me show you i'll prove it to you scientifically if you want to send a text message from your phone to this person's phone what happens you type the message when you send it it goes as what help me please it goes as what do you see it do you realize that the text you send flows from the realm of the spirit to get to the recipient we live in the spirit every day and we call it science. The moment is in the spirit, no time and no distance. That's why I can get to London in that instance. Are you following me? You can stay and send, press and send instantly someone at the North Pole will receive an alert. Let me tell you something, follow me. Once it's in the realm of the spirit, time and distance does not exist. But watch this. When it gets to the person's phone, when it gets to the person's phone, listen, the phone has been configured to interpret and convert what that light is saying into a language that you can understand. That's why Russians use handsets. Indonesians use handsets. Are you following me now? So when, how many of you have received text messages and you just saw Jagola Jagola nonsense there? Because your phone cannot interpret. Maybe it's an MMS. But your phone has not been configured to interpret MMS message. And so the, the words in your phone will try to downgrade what that light is trying to say as best as it can. And then you begin to see arrows and stars. It's attempting to tell you there is a message. Upgrade your phone and then you will see. Perception in the spirit. For many times... When he beckons on us and he's speaking, the insufficiency of the word of God frustrates the manifestation of his voice in your spirit man. And then you are not able to understand what he's saying. That's why people receive half revelations, part revelations. And sometimes God steps in by his mercy to give you pictures and give you words, just a phrase of a song or use the face of somebody that can be a symbol of what he's trying to say that your spirit cannot receive. spiritual man able to interact with the realm of the spirit when you understand spiritual perception it will be your key to walking away from danger many people suffer because they are trying to heal the sick the bible says that paul was preaching he didn't just blindly get up and say i have faith i'm a man of god he was waiting for these promptings of the Spirit. That's why sometimes you see us just worship. I say, what are these people doing? We are waiting. There is a language. We don't just function foolishly. And then suddenly you hear us say, cancer. Cancer. Why not headache? Cancer. Because over time, when you stay with the Spirit, He trains you. As you build yourself in the place of prayer, this is one of the things that happens. Your organs of expression. There is stamina in your spirit. Your ability to understand and interpret the language of the spirit. And then every time he gives you those promptings again, then you know that this is what the spirit is saying. How can you walk 
When you don't know the way of the wind I know you've heard this song, just listen to me How can you run When you don't know the way of the Spirit How can you fly Like the eagles When you don't know the wind His power at work in you Is changing everything In obedience there are many of us who were told days before the armed robbers came to your house. You knew it. The Holy Spirit kept beckoning on you. But because we are not able to understand the promptings of the Spirit. There are many times you sit down in the car to go, to go somewhere and the Holy Spirit begins to communicate to you. When you understand this, you will reign in this life. Are you getting blessed tonight? You better be interested in what I'm saying. So when you pray, there is a rising. Your spirit is rising. In science, when, when water gains energy, what happens? It changes state from ice to liquid to vapor. That's what happens to your spirit, man. When you gain energy, there, there comes a change of state. And you keep rising to the plain and the mountain of God. And when you allow the Holy Spirit to train you sufficiently, you see a list of job offers and instantly you know which one to go to. Because every time you lay your hands to pray, He begins to lead you. Friends, I hope you know that this is what they do to occultic people. The moment you are initiated, He is not initiated, I'm using Him as an example. The moment you are initiated, what happens? They come to you in the night. They are attempting to activate your organs of expression in the spirit. And they begin to show you things that you have never seen. Suddenly you see a lizard. Then you see a picture you think is a dream and it disappears. And suddenly you see some people bring you. And then for many people they say, a, a matured man like this. <laughs> they say traveling in what? Granite seed or something. Now, they are frustrating science to make the spirit alive in you. That cannot be understood scientifically. After a while, you conceive it as a reality and you begin to walk in that light. The grandmother in your village sits down and just perceives that your brother is going to excel. And through that perception, they use incantation to confirm it. And sits down there with her old stick and shouts and says, come back to the village and die. And she goes to bed. And the senseless Anal minded businessman it's meandering the streets of London and for reasons you cannot account for you will take a flight and come back and then you come and die in the village we are not just raising men of understanding but men of power let me tell you some of you will rise tonight with an anger because suddenly you will see that so this has been the promptings of the spirit sometimes when you are sleeping Immediately your, your peace is taken away. And he says, get up. Many of you are waiting for, get up. G-E-T-I-T. -E Wait there until your destiny catches fire. And you get up. And then you pray for five minutes and convince yourself you are done. You pray till the promptings change. And sometimes it will take days. For it to change. Are you following me now? Thank you Jesus. There are times. That suddenly for no reason. You find the Holy Spirit calling you. And he says three days. I want you to pray. At least three to four hours. Three days. He's pressing up your spirit for something to come. And then when you share it. Your spirit is alive. You who would have fallen on this news. You stand and you say no I know God is alive. Stamina has been built. Because of the ability to perceive spiritual things. Hallelujah. Paul was preaching. And while he was preaching, his organs of expression in the spirit, his sense of perception, sight and sound, by reason of praying in the spirit, have been activated. And he kept looking at that man. Waiting to perceive. The moment he perceived it, he said, that's it. Stand up. And he arose. 
God's generals. It was said that there was one of them who had an angel who would always come and stand. And if that angel didn't come, he will never do anything. He would just be worshipping and the people would say, This guy, don't waste our time. He says, I cannot do anything. According to the training that was given to me, it was said to me that when I see this angel, it may not be so for you. See, be careful when you read books. Because many people take their spiritual experiences and build doctrines out of it. You are not permitted to build a doctrine out of your experience. You can share it to guide people. But the word of God is the more sure word of prophecy. So I can share with you how I flow in the spirit. I can share with you how I know that this is what God is saying I should do. I can show with you. I can, you see that the prophets in the Bible operated at different levels and frequencies of perception. Yes, Ezekiel would be caught up in the spirit. And then he saw the bones and instantly he knew they were very dry. Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. Let it cover all the earth. Let it cover all the earth. Hallelujah. interactions of the spirit your ability to perceive realities in the spirit when your organs of expression in the spirit are trained let me tell you something you will command power in this realm so if you are not a man and a woman of prayer prayer is not an option are you listening to me it's not, it's not something for men of God you, you want to flow in power. No. You've got to be men and women who understand how to navigate the path of the Spirit. There are many times you enter to pray. The moment you shut yourself, while you're going, bah, 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 God says, ah, I didn't bring you here to pray. Just sit down. Take your Bible and sit down quietly. Or for some of you, God will say, just be walking up and down. Don't pray. Just keep moving. Just stroll. And people see you hold your notebook and you're just moving. And they say, oh God, I'm saying you should pray. You're eyeing me. God is saying, just keep flowing. And while you're flowing, suddenly, you begin to sense the changes in the atmosphere of the Spirit. You cannot explain it in this realm. But you know that this is a journey in the Spirit. You may not understand, but you know. You know that you are going somewhere. You are not just moving left and right. You are climbing planes in the spirit. When you get to that place where God wants you to get to, He will say, Now son, begin to pray and I will show you something. Suddenly you begin to pray. Man tabo satire. Then a vision is open unto you and you will see the room that you were walking to that just looked like you were moving up and down. And God begins to communicate to you secrets. Bible says the secrets of Lord are with them that fear him and he will show them his covenants Yahweh 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 Yahweh, take us to that play, no oh God. Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. When you become a man and a woman of prayer, you begin to perceive. You know in the spirit. You cannot tell how it is done. Suddenly you are praying. And you are searching for a scripture. And then you just know that it's in Isaiah. How you cannot tell. 
Sometimes the Holy Spirit tells you, go to Isaiah 6 verse 44. Sometimes He just says, go, just go there. He speaks to you because He's talking to your spirit man. It's your mind that does not know where that scripture is. Your spirit knows. And when you allow your spirit, you will turn to that exact verse. I was searching for this scripture. While I was, I was just preparing and searching for the scripture, the Lord said, okay, let's do a quick training. Let your spirit man take place. I will not tell you the scripture. Don't search for it. Let your spirit man find the expression. Suddenly, I don't know how I knew it. I just went straight Acts chapter 14 and there it was. There are times that people come to cover my eyes and I tell them, don't tell me who you are. I use every opportunity to train my ability to perceive things in the spirit. There are times that you begin to pray and when the host of heaven comes, you know. You know. How many of you have just sat down and then your friend wants to come and cover your eyes and then you just turn? Who told you he was coming? Your spirit man. Your spirit man. Your spirit man. You are in the room and suddenly you are moving and you just know I'm not alone. And then you sense when you train yourself, you can know that, oh, angels are in this room. Then you suddenly know that, no, there is a presence. These are not angels. These are not angels. They are beings in this room. They are not angels. As you walk around your house, you perceive their presence everywhere. And you know, Kenneth E. Hagin walked in this dimension of perception to a point that he would see the angels, he knew them by name. And when they showed up in his meeting, he would greet them and say, How are you? Can you imagine? You just drop in your house. As soon as you lift your hands to knock the door, you know that darkness is over this territory. And suddenly you look and you tell your father and you tell your friends, there's no time to greet you. I'll greet you after three days. There is darkness. They say, what do you mean darkness? We're enjoying seriously. In fact, we just got a break. We said, that's what you are. You are judging as a carnal man. I'm speaking to you from the plane of the spirit. I do not see light. You are celebrating light. But what I perceive is darkness. Let us get to the place of prayer. And as we begin to pray in the spirit, these mysteries are unveiled to you. Many of us judge things. Sometimes Satan deceives you. And then when you see a breakthrough, you are smiling in the physical realm. Well, God, how many of you have gotten certain blessings? But there's no rest over that blessing yet. It's not like you know it's God. But it looks like no, 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 this, this is not all the story yet. Something, while you want to relax, God says, this is not the time to sit down. You just sense it. Many foolish people, that's the time we sit down and cross our legs. When a ministry is expanding and people are coming, my soul finds rest. But a man who stays upon the mountain, judges from that perspective. And he looks at that plane and he knows that although this is it, this is what God wants to do. Yahweh, 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 teach us your ways, O God, teach us your ways, O God. Yahweh, Yahweh, 
Hallelujah. This is how I receive some of the songs that we share here. I've told you again and again that most of the songs I bring are not composed. As I allow my spirit man to interact with the realm of the spirit, suddenly I begin to hear voices. That's how the song Adonai came. It was a song that I heard the angels singing. Adonai Lamb of God That's why it comes with the touch of eternity You are worthy Worthy of my praise King of kings Lord of lords Let your kingdom reign in my heart Let your kingdom reign in my heart the angels sing this song. Adonai. Sing Adonai. I'm not a superstar. These are realities in the spirit. They are for your reach. When I share the sound of angelic choir, I don't just say tenor, alto, and soprano. They are a million parts combined together. And that's why, hear me, when the music directors function under the anointing. They begin to put in the parts that can attempt to synchronize. The, have you ever worshipped God and you got to a point where you know you are rising in that worship? That's why when you start worshipping God, any mistake will bring you back to that realm. That's why we press for perfection. Because when you begin to worship, suddenly from the corridors of heaven, the saints begin to join in that worship. And there is a union of the families in heaven and the earth. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the saints, they join us in that worship. And there is a strong presence. There are some songs that seem to be timeless. They carry certain anointing and certain presence. You sing them again. Sometimes you don't know all the song, but that part you know is able to help you relate with the spirit. When God wants to take you through certain planes, what happens is that He shows you, hear me, He shows you some songs. And those songs are able to help you. They are vehicles of transportation. They are not a means for special number. Every, that's why you see us sing certain songs and we keep repeating them. Muimaka, Muimaka. Muimaka sujada naimaka ni naimaka naimaka sujada ni naimaka 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 ehe sujada naimaka ni naimaka ni naimaka sujada naimaka naimaka While you are singing, you do not realize that you are climbing a ladder in the spirit. Your abilities increase. That's why sometimes you see that the worshippers don't change songs. They keep repeating. They keep repeating. Your flesh may just be singing and is weak, but God is saying, keep singing. You are climbing. The more you sing, you are exposed to a greater dimension of His light and power. Naimaka. Suchada Nina Himaka Nina Himaka Nina Himaka Suchada Nina Himaka Nina Himaka Nina Himaka Suchada Nina Himaka Nina Himaka Nina Himaka Lord I give you 
of the spirit the voice of the spirit his promptings his dealings his leading to train your spirit man in the place of prayer you rise to that plane in the spirit where these operations are no longer foreign to you so you exist both as a physical homo sapien and as a spiritual man There are some of us that when you begin to pray, the moment you are praying in the spirit, suddenly a river of joy breaks open in your spirit. In the darkest of times, physically, suddenly the Holy Spirit tells you, start singing a song of thanksgiving. Start giving thanks. And you say, Lord, for what? I just had a report. He says, see, I'm showing you what is happening in the heavens. And you begin to rejoice. And people say you are mad. You say no. I'm not mad. I'm only alive in the spirit. And you begin to give him praise. You give him praise. You worship. And you are sweating. You are not praying. You love yourself. You just rejoice. Again and again. And you rejoice. For the Bible says with joy shall you draw out of the wells. In the realm of the spirit joy is a fetter. It's not just a phenomenon. Every time there is heaviness, God brings a garment and He calls it praise. When the psalm was caught up, He saw that praise is not just a phenomenon. I saw in the realm of the spirit that the moment they begin to make music, these sounds you are hearing, they are living things in the spirit. They are living things. Let me show you a scripture. Psalms 49. I want to show you a powerful scripture. And you understand why we play music as we sing. Psalms 49. Soon going to rise up and pray. I give you the highest. High. Languages in the spirit. 
your ability to combine the codes. There is a language you speak. Let me show you Psalms 49. Verse 3. It says, My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. Verse 4. I will incline my ear to a parable. I will open up my dark sayings upon the harp. Upon the harp. There's something I will do to your spirit. That every time I hear the harp play, it will position your spirit in a way that will begin to unveil dark sayings. Bible says, for they know not, neither do they understand. They grow up in darkness, and so the earth is out of course. Have I not said that you are God, and all of you are children of the Most High? It takes the understanding on how to navigate the paths and the planes of the Spirit. This is what gives victory. This is the tool you need. If you can get this, and you can catch this, you can be a victor in this life. No matter what happens, you will emerge victorious. For you will know when there is victory in the spirit. You will know when there is a cause for travail. When you do not understand the things that are happening around you, you will switch to the frequency of the spirit for explanation. What meaneth these things, O oh Lord? And it begins to speak unto your spirit. And as we examine this series on prayer, I want you to pray with understanding. Many people pray foolishly. That's why we do not reap the benefits of prayer. Prayer is not just a sign of spirituality. There's more to that. God cannot be joking with you. He's not playing games. He's not playing pranks. Hallelujah. Perception in the spirit. We live in a day and age where many people just sit down and evil comes to sweep them with no knowledge whatsoever. Not with the spiritual man. Not with the spiritual man. For every time you reign from the heavens and there is a perception. If it is true that you are seated with Christ, it must translate just from confession to becoming your reality. And it's our job in this place to build men and women who are spiritual. You don't get spiritual because of ministry. When we begin to get spiritual, the next thing we begin to envision pulpit, no, is the secret for life. And in the next few minutes, the spirit of prayer will fall upon us. Let me tell you something I need you to pray. In these weeks that we are entering into is a time of prayer. There's no room for laziness except you are not interested in growth. Want your spirit man to come alive. You are not filled with the Holy Ghost right here, right now. There's no time to do the teaching for you, but you will receive. There is enough power to get you started. We will explain it later. Hallelujah. So we are going to pray. Rise up on your feet.